you need to get your Godhead correct because this group obviously doesn't believe in the Godhead, meaning yes. Father, Son, Spirit. So can you, yeah, can we can we go down the the Trinitarian yeah. belief sure. if you don't mind? Uh, you, we, obviously, the Father is not the Son, right? I'm not. Gonna, I, I have a, I'm not going to answer any questions because I don't want to. No, look I mean, like a obviously, fool. if he's the Son, he's the Son of the Father. The Father is not Jesus. But the father of Jesus, right? The father of Jesus can't be Jesus. Am I my own father? No, you cannot. Okay, so the father of Jesus, we know he's God. And the father of Jesus is not Jesus. So who is Jesus? He's the son who's one with the father in nature. Are you with me now? Let me show you where Jesus is identified as now. I don't know how you say it in your cult group. You say Yahuwah or Yahuwah Shaha. So when I when I look back in the Hebrew, it's yod heh vah So how do you guys pronounce it, your group? I just pronounce it yod heh or Yave. Okay, Yav. All right. Now, I want you to go to Psalm 102. Open it up for me. Read verse 1. Who's this? This is a prayer to whom? Hear my, O Lord. So that's yod heh vav -He or yod heh wav -He. So who is he praying to? Hear my prayer to yod heh vav -He. Okay, now read it. Just read in English. Read the entire verse. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my uh, cry come unto you. Good. Now read verse 12. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever. And the remembrance of your name to all nations, to all generations. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So notice he's praying to Yod Hey Wow Hey. You, O Lord, you Yahweh, are forever, right? Yeah. You shall endure forever. Okay. Now read what he says about the true God. Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27. For old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes. They will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. So wait, this is a description of who? God. And what does he say about the true God? Who laid the foundation of the earth? God. And the true God, right? Yod Hey Wow Hey, right? Yeah. And the heavens are the work of His hands, right? Correct. And this God Yahweh is unchangeable because He'll roll up creation. Creation is changing, but He remains the same, right? Uh, correct. Um, yeah. You say that, right? Yeah. So this cannot be said of a creature because if you're part of creation, you're being changed. And God is rolling you up like a garment. Only God is the same and his years never end, right? Yeah, and it says you will change them. Yes, God God will change them and he'll roll them up like a garment, but he will remain the same and his years never end, right? Yeah. And only the mighty God, who's almighty, laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his own hands, right? Correct. Go to Hebrews chapter 1, read verses 8 to 12. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Awesome. The, but the son, he says, who's the he? Who's speaking to the son and about the son? God. God the Father, right? Correct. Now notice what God the Father says to the son. Keep reading. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of the righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. And you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Now pause right there. Because Jesus became man to become the heir to David's throne, the father becomes his God. So he says, therefore, God, your God, I, who became your God, have anointed you above your companions, meaning your brothers and sisters, whom you come to redeem, right? With the oil of gladness more than your companions, yes. correct. Okay, keep that in mind. So the father's talking to the son, right? Correct. Father now the, the father continues, the father <laughs> continues to speak to the son in verses 10 to 12. Now pay attention to what the father says to the son. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of your hands. They will perish by you, by you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment. Quoting Psalms 102, I see. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. Again, quoting, okay? And you are the same, and your years will not fall. Fail, sorry. Wait, so the Father wow. okay. describes Jesus as that almighty Jehovah God of Psalm 102? Huh. Yeah, he does. He quotes it exactly what it says. And he applies it to who? To the Son. How can he apply it to the Son if the Son is not Almighty Yahuwah, who is without beginning, without end, uncreated, and equal to the Father? He couldn't. But he did. He did, because I see. The Father that. and the Son are one in nature, though they're not the same person. That's why I'm a Trinitarian, right? <laughs> can, I, can I say something? Literally yes, 20 so minutes ago, I was I was crying to the Most High. So this is, is very funny to me, but... Say louder. So I was I was literally crying to the Most High for help. So did you hear it, guys? He just said before I went live, he was crying out to God, the Most High, to show him the truth. Did you guys hear it? Say it again. Yeah. Um. Like twenty minutes ago, before I hopped on your live, I was I was crying because a lot of life hasn't been the best, and I just I don't know. It doesn't. 
It's not going okay. great. So thank you for this, my friend. No, no, thank God. Not me. I didn't know you were coming on. In fact, here, just to show you how much God loves you, how, how real Jesus is, this was an impromptu session. I planned this the last minute. I wasn't going live and on a different topic. Now you tell me, God didn't hear you, how real Jesus is. Then when he saw your tears, you're crying, Jesus in his love stirred up my heart to go live because he wanted me to address you because he loves you. So now let me show you who this Jesus is that heard your tears. Go to Isaiah 44, verse 6 when you get a chance. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, uh, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Now, what it means for God to be first and last, Isaiah explains it in Isaiah 41, verse 4. Who has performed and done it, calling the generation from the beginning. I am the Lord, I am the first, and I am the last. I am he. Do you understand what it means? It says, I was the one who summoned the generations. I create the generations and I summon them. So I was there with the first generation of creatures and I will be with the very last of them, right? To be the first means I was there from the beginning of creation with the first generation of creatures that I brought into being. And because I remain till the end, remember what Psalm 10 says, your years never end. Mm -hmm. I will be there with the very last generation. Correct. That is only true of God because for someone to be there from the start of creation and remain with every generation of creatures to the very last generation, he must be beginningless. He must have been there before creation began. And he must remain forever for him to be there to the very end, right? Correct. You can't say this of a creature because we have a beginning and an end, right? Now go to Revelation 1, 17 to 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Well, when Amen. did your day, wow, hey, die? That wouldn't, the only person that died would be Jesus. So that means Jesus just told you, I am Yod Hey Wow Hey. But when I became a man, I died as a man, and yet still he didn't cease to exist. Right? You see that, right? I do see this. Yes. Now read Revelation 2, verse 8, because I want to give you a few more nuggets. These things saying, the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. How can Jesus be the first and last if only Jehovah is the first and last? Because to be the first and last, you must be there from the beginning of creation, and you must remain throughout all the generations to the last generation. If Jesus is not Almighty God who became flesh, and as a man, he died a human death. You, you, you can't be a creature and be the first and last. And yet he is the first and last because he's no creature, even though he became man. And as a man, he experienced a human death without ceasing to exist, right? Correct. Okay, now let me give you another one. Go to Revelation 21, verses 6 to 7. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the foundation of the water of life freely to him who thirst. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now you catch it. No one denies this is God Almighty, right? Because he says, I will be his God, he'll be my son, right? Correct. But who did he claim to be in verse 6? What are his titles? And he said, it is done. I am Alpha, beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega means beginning and the end. And that's simply another way of saying first and last. Alpha and Omega is the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's like saying, I am A and Z, uh -huh. beginning and first and last. So there's the same title from three different angles, right? Yes. Now go to Revelation 22. Okay. Read verse 12 for me for, to start. And behold, I come quickly, and my, my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am Now, who's coming? Hold on. So, behold, I am coming how soon? Quickly. Okay, now read 20. Verse 20, the same chapter. He who testify uh, to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. He who testify to these things says, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. So, who's the one coming quickly? Jesus. Right? So, who's the one saying, I come quickly? Jesus. The one who says, surely I come quickly in 20. Is it the same one who speaks in verse 12? Behold, I come quickly? Yes. Now, how do we know who he is? Because in the next verse, it's about to tell us. Amen. Okay. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Now you got it. Now, go back to Revelation 22, 12. Read it. Okay. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Now, you have no doubt that Jesus is speaking, right? Correct. I have no doubt. Now, let me show you why Satan didn't want you to get it. Read Revelation 22, 12, 13. Why Satan didn't want you to get it. You said 13? 22, 12, and 13. Okay. Here's why he didn't want you to get it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now you see why Satan didn't want you to get it? But now go to Revelation 21 and 6 and 7 to see who that is. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. 
He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So the true God Almighty is the Alpha and Omega beginning and end, right? Correct. And yet Jesus in the next chapter says, I'm Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, first and last. How can he be a creature if he claims the very titles that only the Almighty, uncreated God claims? Because you, and I'm going by what you said, you you said that he, they're different, but both same in nature. That's right. You can have distinct persons who have the same nature. But my point is, if Jesus is not God, he's a creature like you were taught. How can he claim to be Alpha and Omega, beginning and first last, when these are titles that only the Almighty God, who was without beginning, can claim? He cannot because a, a person that is a creature cannot claim to begin to begin. But Jesus did claim it. Yeah. So are you seeing why we're Trinitarians? Yeah. Well, I, I don't well, believe as a creature anymore, but... Um, it again? I don't believe he's a creature anymore. There you go. But now let me show you some verses on the Holy Spirit being God. Second Samuel 23, 2 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men must be just, ruling okay. the fear of God. I want to ask you a question. Yes. In verse 3, who spoke to David and told David what to say? The God verse of Israel. Three. The God of Israel, right? Yes. But read verse 2, who that is. The Spirit of the, the Lord. Spirit of the Lord is who? The Spirit of the Lord is who spoke, and it spoke the God of Israel. So who spoke to David? The Spirit. But who is the Spirit in verse 3? The God of Israel. So you just proved to me the Holy Spirit who belongs to God is the God of Israel, the Rock of Israel, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, in Jeremiah 31, 33, 33 to 34. Jeremiah 31, 33, 34. But this is the covenant that which I make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be with their God. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. For the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will give their iniquity and their sins I will remember no more. Okay, so it's clear Jehovah speaking, right? Clear that God's speaking, yes. Yeah, Jehovah God, not just a God. And he says, I will forgive their sins and remember their iniquities no more, right? Correct, yes. So Jehovah said these words, right? Correct. Now go to Hebrews 10, verses 15 and 17. I'm going to leave you with this because I gave you a lot of information. Go back and rewatch this, all right? But the Holy Spirit also witnessed to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that which I make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Huh. Okay. So wait. In Hebrews 10, 15 to 17, Paul says the Holy Spirit said those words of Jeremiah 31, 33, 34. But in Jeremiah 31, 33, 34, that was Jehovah God who said, I'll remove their sins. Remember the sins no more. And I'll make this covenant with them. But according to Hebrews, that Jehovah God who said those words was the Holy Spirit. This is correct. Yes. You got it? I do. And again, I'm letting you know this is a miracle. I'm going to tell you why. I wasn't planning to do a session at this time. And you can see my topic when I decided to do it had nothing to do with your question. Who do you think moved me to do a session and then have you show up 20 minutes after you're crying in tears and change my topic to address you that Jesus who is Jehovah God Almighty, the eternal Son of the Father, the eternal love of the Spirit, one with the Father and the Spirit, the triune God, whose Bible he now revealed to you so you won't be deceived. Though Satan tried to blind you so you can see it, the Almighty Spirit broke that blindness because he loves you and he's in love with you and he just gave you a sign. Young man, I'm in love with you and I hear your cries and I will never leave nor forsake you. See, the true God, when he heard you cry, he didn't bring you to Islam. He didn't bring you to a Jehovah's Witness. He didn't bring you to a Unitarian. He didn't bring you to a Hebrew Israelite. He brought you to a Trinitarian. Glory to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, the one true Most High God. Change your vocabulary. Okay. Glory to, the, to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.